so we can take that up sometime in the evening. And sign prices for the spit signs, we have a few quotes so we, we can discuss that. And I also, I guess the bylaw piece is in here. So um, the only thing I was maybe hopeful to do is quickly discuss with Laura this grant piece so that she's been working hard on Frank, it. Frank, I have one other thing. Yep. If we have time, I'd like to discuss the associate members in, the, in that whole process. Okay. If we have time. What are we going to call time? enough time? Ten minutes like Ten minutes. If it's, minutes. Less, if it's less than eight thirty. Right. Right. Okay. Another, another thing that I'd like to discuss at the end under the community liaison's report or the administration is the the time from the, the receipt of information from applicants. Right now, it's five days. It's not sufficient to meet the state's law of getting it in the newspaper and having a five day notice. Okay, well, let's just, that, we'll add that to the, we're not going to discuss it this yeah. minute, but we'll do that. And then there was a piece on the news this morning, I was hoping to get your input on it, was like the tides seem to be rising, or the water level seems to be rising more in our area. Did you catch that? No, but I know. But I'd like your input. I do know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, okay. Um, I make a motion to accept the agenda <coughs> as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. So, Laura, you've been, we appreciate your efforts to get this grant rolling. On. Yep, I sure. And you're so renowned, we don't even have, you don't have to introduce yourself. Just, uh. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Frank. Um, the reason I'm here is to get some paperwork signed for the connection with two land grant applications. These are applications for money for parcels that the town meeting already voted to acquire. One is the Crosby property that was voted a couple of years ago, and that one has been on a waiting list in the land grant program, and apparently it's at the top of the waiting list. So it's very likely that that will be funded this coming year if the town meeting applies for it. And the, the um, owners of it, I believe it's maybe the Beals, on that property. Crosby and Beal. Crosby yeah. and Beal. They're willing to wait a little bit longer for the money. Not much, but they <laughs> <laughs> Well, we think there's a little bit of still movement as a couple, you know, trying to get our access and stuff that part of the PNS is subject to the access business being squared away. So hopefully that'll all sort of mesh together um, would be great. But we appreciate your willingness to go out, these things are a pain in the neck, and thanks for putting this together. Well, on the, on the, um, the second piece of property, uh, the Higgins McAllister property, the town hasn't gotten the appraisal yet on that property, so um, the jury's really still out on what's going to happen as far as, you know, exactly right. how that all works out. But will you still be applying for the grant, or do you have to wait for the appraisal to come in before you apply for the grant? The appraisal is part of the grant, and I'm assuming that mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and apply even if the numbers um, are different from okay. what people expect. Okay. Okay. What, do we have to wait on the Crosby Beal deal uh, no. before we? <laughs> no, no, both of those no, I think are important to go forward because the deadline is July 12th, and that's really right around the corner. Absolutely. And there's uh, paperwork that you all need to sign. One piece of paper for each grant. So we were so close on the cut for last year that we think that um, there's a very good chance that we'll we'll get a grant on the Crosby piece um, yeah, this year. Well. Yeah, it's so been it's been up for a long time. Everything's done. Right. Pretty much. Just put, put it well, it's not that simple, but no, I know, but um, it, you know, you're so close. You can't right. Five hundred thousand dollars, maybe, or. Well, it sounds like there's a really good chance on the Crosby, but it sounds somewhat unlikely that we would get funded for two properties in one year. So, you know, maybe the Higgins McAllister doesn't yeah. get it, but the Crosby does get it, which is for more money anyway. We send Penny out with the people from the state and don't let them come back until they agree to do that. Until they agree, we go. I'll talk to Nero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, do we, the signature sheets, you have them? So we'll just do those at the close of the meeting? I promise. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Laura, thanks so much. Okay, thanks Appreciate it.
there's a pain in the neck to put that stuff together. Yeah. That's that's a special knack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So under we'll start move right into the IDAs. Um, domain. Is it fonts? Memorial. Going until she gets the title for it's all done. So. Right away, and I would Does anybody over there, unless you want to go into August on that the bench? She's she out of state settling this. I'd do at least, I'd do at least a month. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. What is the bench for? Um, I think a family member, and they're not sure if they own the property or blah, blah, blah. blah. They got to. Okay. All right. So you want to go July 30th or you want to go into August? Basically What's the August meeting? The August 13th. July. All right. I make a motion to continue on Scarecrow Road Memorial Bench to July 30th. What year? What year is that? A 19. No, it's not 19. It's 2000. <laughs> now that we have yeah. that settled, I'll second motion. that. Second, <laughs> all in favor? Second. And I. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Ha Halsey, yes. <coughs> 276 Central Ave. Yes, that's me. On June 25th, 2012, during the 615 meeting, the Town Hall Citrus Conservation Commission will act on the request of Beverly Halsey for determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the situate wetlands bylaws to clear driveway of overwash on property located at 276 Central Ave, Hummerock. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Yep. So you just state your name and address for us. Uh, my name is Beverly Hallisey. I'm sorry. Huh? Hallisey. Hallisey. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, the property is 276 Central Avenue. I live in Hummerock. And you're looking to do what, Mrs. Just Hallison? To clear the lot from the, um, the ocean washing through. I have P.F. Spencer, who is my contractor, and he takes the rocks and deposits them to the ocean side of the home okay. and smooths them all out. Um, can we jump to the quick and let Jim weigh in on that one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't really have. My, I really don't have an issue with it as long as it, you know, as long as you, you remove just enough gravel for parking and access. Yeah, it's on Central <laughs> Ave, that whole section right. where everyone digs out every year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Okay. Can, can we put in a, uh, a maintenance order in there? Loan that? Yes. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seem to do that with everybody. How many years? Five. Three, three. I think we ought to put in five. Okay. With, with notification. So that's a negative three. Well, it kind of goes through like the whole board here. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> 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 I'm going to issue it to them. Just <laughs> 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 been that lightning. I think it's a lightning. So it's just from in front of the house. It's not under the house? No, we, we, we just remove them to the second set of pilings, the weekly access the stairs and the lot. Okay. But not completely under the house. All right, just that's so we can drive into the lot. Because we don't want to go all under oh, the no. house. All right. No, no. Okay. Just the second set so we know how to Oh, No questions. Fine. No, fine. Would you like to make a motion? <laughs> <laughs> motion for negative three with a five-year maintenance clause on it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, you're good. Maybe, um, there's really nothing else to add to that, I guess. No. Okay, good. He yeah, just like hates I said, just be very so fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. Thank you. Yep. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Hadley Golf Club, Inc. On June 25th, 2012, during the 6:15. PM meeting at the Town Hall of Citra Conservation Commission will act on the request of Hadley Golf Club Inc. for determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situate Wetlands Bylaw to install underground water, sewer, and gas utilities on property located 
adjacent to four, 451 Hadley Road, situate of Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Uh, Bill Marburg, I'm with Paul Marabito. This is about is the property, uh, Hadley's going to put some handicapped restrooms here with a snack bar to replace the other snack bar that's uh, one hole away here. And we're not here tonight asking for to build a snack bar or anything, but BPW Al Banger has approved the sewer connection that is going on uh, right there. And that's something that was part of it, and I think it's called the next 30 days. They're going to have that opened up. So what we would hear is get permission to get these utility lines into the property. And uh, whatever's going to happen as far as building handicapped restrooms and stuff, that's not going to happen until late fall anyhow. So we would be back related to that as well. While the PPW just approved this, we'd like to be able to get permission to do this. I don't know if it's something under the other order of conditions that has to do with this, if this is covered or supplemented, whatever we want to file with that to see we proceed in there. Um, we uh, surveyed the property in the area of the proposed work. This is Hadley Road, and this is the Musqueshka Brook that goes underneath the road. Um, the town has a pavement ripped up to, to the brook. Um, there's, some, there, there's an existing hay bale line that we show in the plan in this area here for the work that's going to be ongoing here. Um, and the purple line represents the silt sock we would put in from Hadley Road up to the small uh, structure. There, there's a small green building here, I think that it holds some equipment for the golf club. There's a large T here which is elevated, so the silt sock would just go from the existing silt sock in the street up to the top of the T. The yellow line represents the uh, utility trench that would have a water service line in it, um, some ga a small gas line, and a, a sanitary sewer force main. Um, that would serve as the snack bar and the restrooms up in this area here. This is the 100-foot buffer zone to both the uh, wetland line and the edge of the uh, brook. And the only work we're doing is, is to excavate a trench and backfill it after the utilities are in. The work should take two or three days. As Bill mentioned, the town is going to bring the sewer up to our property. Right now, it's going to stop here. They're going to bring it up 75 feet and put the manhole here so we can tie the force main into it. Um, the gas company is, go is going to install a sleeve across the road so we can, so we can uh, connect to that. The work scheduled to, uh, to happen in the street in the next four to five weeks. Um, there would be no impact on the wetland because of the uh, silt sod would hold back any, any material that might come out of the trench, which should be out for maybe a couple days at the most, and then they'd backfill it. So that's, that's the extent of the work. <coughs> Okay. The only question is, is there some unforeseen reason this isn't built? Those lines that are underneath and back and then taken back up. I'm not sure. No. Yeah. No, the town's doing it, the betterment's been assessed. So you're just going to put them on. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's definitely yeah. do that. There's no handicap after this. Yeah, no, I'm okay. But it just, it's almost like the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart. Well, you know, the only reason, it's a, but but it's a good idea. You yeah. might as well do it now. Exactly. If you're do it later. But if you don't do it, yeah, then, then they have a moratorium on cutting the road for five years. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I, I have no questions. No questions. Uh, did you say this is a new sewer hookup? Yeah. Or, uh, so they're yeah. they're sewer in Hadley. They're running a brand new sewer line down Hadley Road right now. That whole project that right. Albanese is doing. I'm just surprised that. I mean, there there's already a notice of intent for the project, and most of them include that, but they, they don't include water or sewer. So. Oh, okay. I'm I'm just wondering if it's a if it's a new sewer hookup, why Hadley's getting it, and if there are a lot of other. All, all the butters on the sewer line get it. Don't Okay. So if this you is have on, frontage on, on Hadley, Hadley Road. Road. Yeah, sure. On Hadley. Okay. And cool. apparently they missed this leg or something in there. Okay. Thing, or maybe that leg is filed. But there's a notice of intent already for this project, but it doesn't include water or sewer. Right. So. Right. Okay. Although you just put in a new water main, too. Right. I mean, <laughs> this is the gravity line we tie into. From there, it flows down to the Squash Street Ave, and it's pumped up to a force main. It comes back by this project and up to Egypt Beach. Okay. Jim? No. Or Paul? I make 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so we can, yeah, we can do it. Um, is it Lucetti? But that's um, been withdrawn. So now we have to wait. <laughs> We seven minutes. We have these other hearings time. So let's go through some of these other items. Um, the appointing a liaison to the bylaw committee. I think, is that, did we do that, Tony? Or? I think we I actually voted. That's my point. We, we were joking around, but I, do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Well, in, in light of the issues going back and forth with land use and things, it seems like it would be important at this time to have a liaison on the bylaw committee. And um, I think Tony already had his hand up. I volunteered for that, yes. So um, I guess it's just a matter of appointing him. Or should we vote that we just make it Sure. I make a motion to appoint Tony Jones, our liaison for the bylaw. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I didn't vote, Carol. <laughs> um, and then signs for the spit. I got approached by the police chief that we would get some signage out there ASAP. We have the yellow sign that we did, and then we had the printed sign. Yeah. Wherever it is. Um, let, me, let me give you a little 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 bit on on this I have I have asked for proposals um, from I asked for four and I got three different proposals on essentially this size sign uh, with with this with this wording on it okay right the one I got last week um, this is going to take the place of some signs that are already up I'm assuming I was thinking that we would add those too. Like, what these signs will do will, will allow the Citra police to enforce the rules that right. we currently have. But these differ. The wording on these differs from the from the wording that's already up. So well, yeah. the, I would prefer to take the ones that are up down. This is the yellow signs. This, the yellow sign that we have up, is a big. It's two foot by two foot. Mm -hmm. And it says, no dogs for April to September, some days. No, uh, no fires. And I think that's I think that's it. And then it says per order, and it's a it's a big sign and it's on tin. Mm -hmm. I can't find out who authorized that sign, but. The verbiage on it is different than this verbiage, and this verbiage is the verbiage that we talked about last year as being the the rules of the road. Okay. And um, what I would like to do is get get these signs made and take the other ones down and put these up in in their place. Because these these give much more information. They tell it like it is, and I we have too many competing signs all over this town anyway, in my opinion. Okay. Would and, we be okay. better served with a, a large one also, like at the entrance? You know, these small signs I imagine are going to be out at posts around the. Well, I was going to put these at all the entrances and at the uh, at at the driftway. And at the uh, at the marinas where they have that big sign, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if we want to have a big sign that in essence says this, well, that's what I'm saying. It, maybe we went we want a lot of small ones out at the spit, but in a few key locations like where people walk out to the spit or or at the driftway park or at the marina, do we right. want to get six or eight larger signs that can be posted in places where a lot That'll of that'll be much more expensive. That's the, the, therein lies the, I, I, 
What kind of money is that? Well, to do these, That's essentially right. like this, yes. okay, um, we're talking seven bucks a piece, which is nothing. Okay. I think to do the big one, okay, is probably about 25. Uh, and we, and there are more big signs than, than these. If we put them just out at the spit, we're probably only talking five or six or maybe ten out at the spit. So, so whose responsibility is to pay for these signs? I have no idea. I have no idea who put the signs up that exist. Well, and everybody sort of goes like this. Well, whatever. It's, well, it's a rather interesting situation, actually. Well, we won't throw them away. We'll just put them in the cellar. Well, if you order the signs, I personally, I think we should go, like Frank said, that we should have three or four big signs for the entrances. And then we can do well, there are a lot of entrances. I mean, you're talking James Landing, you're talking the Driftway, you're talking the entrance to the Spit, you're talking the town marinas, two town marinas. I mean, those, the big signs are at each of these places. So half of that. Well, why don't we see? We still don't even know where this funding is going to come from. I want to get this to the town administrator and, right. and uh, right. get her to approve it, so we right. can get these. He just like. I mean, see. I think I think what we should do is order twenty or twenty-five of these things, put them up wherever we can, mm -hmm. and and then get and and get those before the Fourth of July weekend or week. Next week. Next week. Yeah. yeah. Put up as many as we can, then find out how much it, how much it costs to do the, the big deal using this verbiage, and and that would be a separate approval by her. Okay, that's what I would uh, suggest doing. I uh, yeah, you might as yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. And you've got the prices, so I, yeah. you could just shoot them over this. Uh, uh, she should have them now. Okay. Oh, you sent them. And I mean, Carol has them. She has. Will them. you follow up with her? I will f I'll follow up. Okay, great. And then once we know that that's happening, maybe just let the police chief know. I would like to. I would like to get his approval to take down the other ones and put these up and one thing and another. So well, let's get these going and then ask him. I mean, as then soon as just I very get anxious her, to her see permission, this. I will go over and talk to him. Yep. Okay. Tomorrow morning, hopefully. Good. Well, we Carol, is she in tomorrow morning? I don't know. Um, okay. Yes. So we can move on to Stanton, Zero Hadley Road, Zero Man Hill Road, Wetlands Delineation Continued. Creek that was down off the, actually off the property but below the property um, had Jeff add you know some labeling for boarding vegetative wetlands um, the flood zone in the flood zone uh, the green line is the, the wetlands the blue line is the flood plain red line is the 50 foot and the black line is the 100 foot so what we'd like is uh, the commission to accept the plan issue a mm -hmm. Um, can we jump to Paul yes, and then come back? We have a slide, uh, slide plan from the uh, project survey and the revision date on this is June 18, uh, 2012. And that has the, uh, uh, the accepted line that we, uh, that we agreed upon on that plan. So we've got uh, uh, the revised. Flags shown on that additional piece of land that wasn't actually part of the land yet, and it's got the 50 foot buffer zone, 
own kind of the buffer zone tax that we've shown, and it has the uh, land subject to purchase going forward. Um, so at this point, I think we have to verify from a plan that we can verify the line and we, we decide to accept the plan and we do bid for three years. Rad would be bid for three years. My recommendation is to go to the hearing and see if you were there. We can file one for the project. So, 3404. Penny? The, the final revision date that you'll see on the uh, site plan is June 18, 2012. Is that the 315 date? March 15, or which which is the no, no, no the six one, six one June 18th, right here, Tony. This is the new one. This is the new one. Oh, that's, that's the most lost. Um, just wondering, oh, Title right. Creeks, okay. and this says top of Bank of Creek. Right. Do Title Creeks have riverfront? No. no. So intermittent streamwood, but not a Title. No, no just perennial. Perennial river. All right, okay. Just trying to no questions. Nothing. Um, Jim? Yeah, talk about that. Okay. Anybody in the audience? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Jim. Jim, I'm Michael Scott. I'm from Nevada. Could I ask a question uh, to you that you could ask to your consultant, or can I ask a consultant directly? It's far away. Okay. Um, Mr. Shea. Science is it unusual to have wetlands drop to such a significant extent back towards the ocean? In other words, what I'm suggesting is that in 15 linear feet on the topography over there, the wetlands drop roughly 45 feet towards the ocean. It, to me, as a layperson, it looks incredibly curious to have. I might approach the drawing, sir. Sure. To have this thumb of wetlands up here, which creates obviously a pretty good buffer. And then all of a sudden it vanishes and drops back. We see that all the time. Okay, so that's pretty common. Yeah. And this drawing here with these lines, is this the June 18th drawing that yes. you're talking about? Correct, it should be. You'll see a date down in the lower right corner. Yeah. And I noticed on your report, your written report to the town of Sixwood, you suggested that the wetlands line was more likely at the 14 foot elevation. And I noticed the green line drawn in here isn't exactly on the flood zone. Uh, what changed your mind? I said actually in the original report that the original flagging would be moved out more towards the, uh, you see it would be out more towards the land subject to purchase going forward line. And that's when we had to go back to flag the line. So in the area where the flags are, in that, that's the, in the southern, southern section of the property, the flags are accurate in terms of the wetland. Now, the Sorry. land subject to coastal storm flows is also a wetland due to a field, which is land without it. And we see that the lot on coastal property the land subject to coastal storm flows can actually be land with or upwind of the actual biological wetland. And so what impact, if any, will that have moving forward with any proposed alteration to the, to the wetland well, we're, for the buffer? Well, we're only here to verify wetland land. We're not here to talk about any alteration. That's not part of the hearing at all. So the, the co coastal storm flowage doesn't really play a role in this drawing that we're seeing before us today? Well, it's a 100-year flood zone. It's not, it's, it's already a pre-established Anybody else in the audience? So, but you understand this process. The NRAD is, is solely to delineate the wetland. Well, I understand and you're going to issue an order of resource area delineation, which may or may not be confirmed on a PO 
identify the state. Right. Well, that's that's up to you or whoever. But it's, this isn't a project. That that would be the next step. Typically, the applicant would like to know what the wetlands line are, and then that sort of gives them some parameters to to work with. Right. I, I guess it's getting ahead of ourselves, but there's, there's a very big slope here. I don't know if anyone actually did a site walk. I know last time we were here two weeks ago, some members had talked about doing mm -hmm. a site walk. But there's a significant downgrade towards the ocean here. Um, so that the typical 100-foot buffer where the land might be flat is extremely different here because I'm going to suggest there's no way you're going to build sufficient retaining wall to keep but, but you understand you, yeah. what you're talking yeah, I'm about. I'm getting is, ahead of myself. Right. But as you, no, but we shouldn't even be discussing that because it's going to be in that filing. We can't talk about alterations. Well, you're setting a buffer zone, which becomes the baseline. All we're setting is a line on the plan. It's yeah. just the wetlands. We're not here to talk about any project, no physical alterations to the land. It's just a wetland. Line. And the buffer zones are set off of that wetlands line, correct? Yes. So this order of resource area delineation becomes the foundation upon which all other engineered drawings will be based. If there are even any more. Nothing, theoretically, nothing could ever happen again. We could establish where the wetlands are, and we, we could go in a filing cabinet for... Irregardless of what's going to happen, right now, that's what we're here to determine. It's well. just where the wetlands lines and, and then those buffers. Right. Thank you. If the board's comfortable with what everyone said, then thanks. I have no further questions. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? So can I get a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um. We got about one more minute. The next one up will be Hale. So if you want to take your seats and we'll just. Um, what's the drainage workshop? <laughs> Jim? Drainage workshop. Anybody going to a drainage workshop? Yeah. Sitting on the flyer that. Yeah, I was going to try and go. And that's the 28th. So is that Thursday? Yeah. And it's here in the town hall? Okay. Is anybody interested, or do you think anybody will have an opportunity to go to that? I'm going to try. Yeah. Um, any idea what time? It's probably 7. 7 to 9, isn't it? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I didn't bring um, it. I thought I brought it with me. Okay. That's all right. Um, okay. Hail. 37 and 41 Mordecai Lincoln Road. How are you doing? Uh, 730, sorry. Okay, thank you. Yep. At the last meeting, uh, Commissioner Warren just had uh, a few more things on the plan. One was the, one was the driveway for the proposed garage. And what we added was the uh, driveway here, it, which is paved because they removed and moved the seated. Uh, and we're going to take this shut off. And that was the last meeting that the Commission wanted to look at. Penny? No, I think we just wanted it on the Okay. Todd? I have no questions. No questions. No. Gentlemen? I just said one. I wasn't here for the last hearing. I just didn't pay any attention. Yeah. It's, uh, no problem with the septic system and, and, and no problem with uh, the garage or, or where they the driveway is 9,000 square feet. The what? Area, right? And the garage is 6,000 square feet of impervious area going in riverfront area, but there's been no proposal for any mitigation for work within the riverfront area. Six thousand? Six thousand? No, it's about, it's about thirty by forty. Twelve hundred and ninety eight. Okay, and what and what has been used? 
1,630. Okay, when you add those two together, yep. see, uh, typically other towns are working, they keep altering the river frontier, and you can alter them within the 100 plus the river frontier, so it does work. Okay. But typically um, in the river frontier, they're looking for a you know mitigation to those alterations. Wait, I think we did we did ask Paul. I think at the last one about mitigation and one of the things they were doing was removing this driveway. Okay. The impervious area will be the garage. Okay, and that's 12 from the owner. Okay, and the area, the yeah. area coming out on the, uh, the other driveway? The other driveway is 982. Yeah. Plus the shed. Plus the shed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So probably only another 100 square feet. So I mean, it's yeah. like 200. Yeah, so, so what do you want? 200. Personally, I'd love to see you get rid of the old garage, but I'm not. Well, it's, 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 it's not. It's a shed. I should. You know, yeah. It's all it is a shed. shed. Yeah. Oh, the shed. That's right. Because the old, the, yeah. the shed behind the house was going to be turned so into. I remember you said that. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. That's that's a shed there. It's not a garage. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody uh, want to comment on Paul's? I've, I've tried before, and he's useless. Uh, excuse me. I can't. I can't get through to it. What in terms of mitigation? Uh, well, again, there's obviously we got a pretty big area within the 100 to 200 foot, but there's areas within the right. first hundred feet to do some replanting or whatever, or like an erosion area to just you know fix. There's lots of different ways to do it. <coughs> are, are you a, if, are you aware of any invasives on this on the um, property, Phil? Any invasives, um, Phragmites, um, any plants that should not be purple loose strife, anything on the property that. Um, well, in fact, there's pretty much all growth and woods going down to the down to the pond down there. It's pretty thick today. It's thick. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, if you're planting it, it probably dies. I guess what they. I'm thinking more the other way around. If there's any invasive plants that can be it removed can as part of your... Yeah. Well, you can, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> well, that's an invasive. You can, <laughs> as long as you go at it properly. <laughs> I, I think that might, would to me, would be something that we could request in the orders that um, the owner um, make an effort to remove any invasives. Maybe during the... Um, Site plan the site visit. Um, since Mr. Shea's so interested, he could take a look out there and see uh, what he could find, and see if you guys could work out something along that line. Would that be acceptable? Yes. To remove poison ivy. No or or any other. Well, I think why don't you take a, during the during the during the pre-construction? Why don't you take a look at it with the agent if he can spot out? And it may be different than poison ivy. There may be some frags, or there may be something else that he sees out there and that you guys can talk about okay. some um, uh, invasive eradication would be a good, I think I think a, wor a reasonable request. Does that sound okay? Sure. All right. Thank you. A second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, we've got a few minutes before Marshall. So on um, if you think you should. Well, what, what day are we gonna have this nice chair ready? So it's good I can I think we're okay. Okay, cool. I mean well. Yeah. Okay. Um 
Carol, I'm going to, uh, the next one is my butter, so I'm going to recuse myself. Well, we've still got three oh. minutes of discussion here. You're not okay. off the hook yet. Jeez. Okay. I was trying to get out early. What yeah. is it, I saw that happening. You got an airplane flight or something? Or? So on, on Jim and Paul, the other night we had this discussion. We had the um, show cause for number eight, Border Street. And I was thought I was so smart that I said that um, they could amend their orders, but in fact they don't have any. <laughs> yeah. Well, they originally they were going to have orders because they were going to come in off of old, old Gannett Road. But then they withdrew that. Right. Right. So, no so so there was no orders. Which is what raised the whole question of this coming right. here and had no approval. Right. So. Right, but we we said to them, and I, they never said they never said back. Oh, by the way, we didn't get, um, we don't have an order of conditions. Um, don't they have the, don't, what do they have to run the uh, the drainage? They got a drainage swale. They're going to tie into a catch basin, and then they're going to discharge the they have orders on into that. a tidal creek. They do. Yeah, on the mm. on your driveway because they had to go from. Yeah, they had to go. They have to. They oh, they withdrew that, didn't they? No, no, no. no. Yeah, that was right. well, what's one person? Okay, first, they originally were coming off of Gannett Road to access the property, and then they withdrew that when they, they were sent in with opposition from the commission going up that steep embankment. So they refiled a new notice of intent to trim it off the border street to build the new house. Then uh, Mitch Grady came back to me and said that they were working with Kevin Cassidy on drainage on the roadway. No, actually, though, the proposal for the road wasn't to go up there. It was to go to the right oh, wow. and go through the edge of the wetlands. And right. I remember people asking, why can't you go up there? And they were like, well, it's too steep. They were trying to skirt the wetlands and well, go around all the ledge. The engineer also knew that there was going to be erosion problems and possible. Mm -hmm. I knew it. But all of a sudden, we get this. My understanding is when they went to start the project for the driveway coming in off of Border Street, there's a lot of ledge. But where it crosses the street, the right. In the buffer zone, right. there's no approval for that. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I don't know who made the decision here, but look at this plan. that there's no approval given for coming off of that. And that goes back to, you know, the first approval that was with the proposal that was withdrawn. So, so they do have a set of orders yes. for that project. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So... My question would be, would we be better off to have them uh, have them request to amend the orders for that access and along with that give us a mitigation plan for the damage that they did? Or do they need to refile? The only thing is now you're mixing things because the, the approval for the drainage is for work down on Gannett Road yeah. and going to the other side where the coastal wetlands are, where the wetlands are. Mm -hmm. There's, two, there's a couple of things you could do. You could have them, through enforcement, do a restoration plan to restore the area that gets disturbed by bringing in the machinery for the tree, tree removal. 
that they attempt to do is a drainage project down below right. and have them do something. And that way they wouldn't have to file a new notice of intent to it. Well, I don't feel it. I mean, if that's what they have to do, it just yeah. seemed to me like we already had a notice. Because I do remember a notice for it, so I'm right. not totally. Um, but the fastest way to get it repaired totally would probably be to just specify, because they seem ready to do it, specify what we want done. Right. The town, fixed. they said that the town does not want that crushed stone to remain at the base. They had filled in sort of that little bit of a swell with some crushed stone and driven over that. The town, they offered to leave it, and apparently the DPW said, no, take it out. So that's got to come out. They got to restore that slope, plant it. Well, why don't, yeah, why don't they? Then we, we can do is say, why don't we tell them to issue a restoration plan for the work involving the DPW work and the stone work and, okay. the, and the work within the 50 and 100 foot buffer zone on that slope there. Sounds good. Just so, the, uh, to, I, I'm pretty sure I asked the question about trees, and they said they didn't take out any major trees. That's not what the, 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 con the site contractor, when I talked to them the, the first day we realized there was a problem there, I would say it's going back three weeks ago, yeah. that when I brought in Rick Ambrosia, he said, no, he said, you know, we brought the tree machine in, we had to take out a couple of trees, he said, and I said, yeah, but we brought it up, it was there once with a little pathway for curb cuts, right. suddenly there's this much bigger road, and he said, well, because we had to bring in this big machine to get up there. And I'm like, well, why didn't you come in off a board of trees? And he said, well, I didn't want to get into yeah, that. The bottom line is they, they had an approved order of conditions to come in off a board of trees, and that's what the plan showed. Okay. And I'm like, show me an approved plan with an order of conditions to come in, and they can't because it doesn't exist. All right, so we're going to send them a letter with the enforcement order. Can you do that with Carol? And then ask them for the what we would like from them. Okay. Great. Um, so we're going to go back to Marshall at 15A Hawthorne Street Septic Repair um, on June 25th, 2012, at 7 p.m. The Town Hall Situ Conservation Commission will hold wetlands hearings on the chapter. 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situa Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Robert Marshall to repair a septic system on property located at 15A Hawthorne Street, Hummerock. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. And just make a note that Paul Paris recluse himself because he's an abutter, I believe. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gary Walcott. I work for Brady Consulting. We're representing the homeowner, Mr. Marshall, in this matter. As you said, it's a septic repair at 15A Hawthorne Street. Uh, there are some resource areas on that location. Um, it is in a FEMA flood zone, uh, FEMA AE elevation 11, and of course, Amarok is a barrier beach. Um, we do have, uh, we are outside of the riparian zone. We are showing the 200 foot outer riparian zone here from the riverside of Hummerock. Uh, so we don't have any issues with that. Uh, what we're proposing is a 1,500-gallon septic tank and two 30-foot-long leaching trenches with uh, six plastic ADS chambers in uh, those trenches. Everything's going to be below ground. The existing surface as it is now under this trench here is an existing gravel parking area. And in the front here, it's basically gravel, stone. There's no real lawn to speak of or anything like that. No vegetation. A little bit in the corner here, little trees here that we're going to be able, well, little <coughs> bushes and scrubby pines back here that we're going to be able to avoid. Uh, well, we're not proposing to remove any vegetation from the uh, site. Um, as I said, we are putting it well below the surface, um, three feet below the existing grade so that they're um, homeowners will be able to park on it. That is a requirement that the Board of Health will have. But the reason I bring it up here is to illustrate that we're not changing the grade of, in any way. We're not altering the form of the dune, uh, if the so-called dune or barrier beach in the area. And we're essentially putting it in the ground, covering it back over, and replacing it to its uh, existing uh, state. And if you have any questions, I'll take them at this time. Okay. Um, 
so you're going down three feet, it's still high enough above the water table? Or yeah, that the, the water table was at, uh, even with a, a forced adjustment to meet the height, the 11 foot tide, um, even adjusting it by that amount, it brings the um, high water elevation to elevation point zero, or 0 0.21, and we're required to be five feet above that, which we've been able to maintain. And you have Board of Health? We have not had the meeting with them yet. It's scheduled for July 10th. Jim? No issue. Paul? Anybody in the audience? Okay, so should we, um, we can't vote this until Board of Health. No, we, we, we can meet uh, the next issue over at the Stone with Board of Health. And, and typically, when by the time the job comes to us, the Board of Health agent is with the engineers, but it's really a place to put the septic system. We could close the hearing and approve it, subject to getting Board of Health approval if there's any minor tweaks with the plan and the engineers are from staff. Well, I can add to what Paul just said. So we did have a conversation with Jennifer today about scheduling the meeting. Usually she doesn't schedule the meeting with us until she's asked us for any re revisions that she'd like to see or made any suggestions that she'd like to see us uh, investigate. She did not make any of those typical comments, didn't ask for any revisions, just stated that it would be on the next agenda with them. But like Mr. Shea said, that it can be contingent upon a board of health approval without any changes. Okay. If it's a minor change, then you just give us a revised plan to put the file. Okay. Okay. We need an actual plan. We will, we'll know by the 10th yeah. about, about board of health approval. Okay. I make a motion to close on a week in board of health approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Well, we got to go 10 minutes this time. <laughs> this is too easy. Um, you lost it. Yeah, what, do we have anything else? So we had the bylaw, but Gannett Road, the signs, drainage workshop. Oh, it is. I'm sorry. <coughs> so Duffy, uh, 271 Central Ave. Yep. On June 25th, 2012, 710 Town Hall, the Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, Mass General Laws, and Section 30700. Town Central Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Judy Duffy to landscape, repave drive, raise height of wall, and maintain riprap on property located at 271 Central Ave Hummerock. About as other interested parties are invited to attend. Okay. It was almost like you didn't want to hear us. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll keep my glasses on, I guess. Okay. My name's Kevin McGuire. I'm with me. There's also a pier on the property, 
And at the time that we started the project, we wanted to address, but uh, Mrs. Duffy wanted, uh, wanted us to address the pier and the different uh, work that needs to be done on the pier. But we kind of ran out of time in the work that we would have had to develop a scope off for. And as a result, we just asked to come in to see if we could get that cease and desist uh, notice uh, removed. And hopefully within the next uh, within the next month or sometime in July, we will come in with the uh, pier, the work to be done on the pier. The pier has a chapter 91 license and a 94 license. One of the things we're asking tonight is to maintain the riprap that's on the uh, pier. There's a discussion on whether or not it's riprap, gum, riprap or rubber. But in any event, it has a 91 license. It's not entirely within the footprint of the 91 license or the 94 license. And there are thick black lines that are on the plan that uh, show where the top and bottom slope of the existing riprap is. And then we superimpose the license line for the riprap. That's the permitted uh, license plan. And you can see that this uh, thick black line is there. And we shaded in green, and here are two areas that the riprap as license did not go that far out onto the marsh, and then shaded it in a, in a reddish color is where the riprap, where uh, the land was filled in a riprap that was not permitted was located. So part of this notice is to maintain that, uh, that riprap. And so much is that uh, in the 91 license we imposed, included in the package, uh, it was done around 1968 prior to the Wesley Center. All of the work we're proposing uh, here is in the uh, River Point area. So if we kind of read through the items A, A through M, One is in front of the house, there's a wooden deck right there. If she wishes to maintain that wooden deck, it uh, needs a little bit of work. There are two items that were grouped together. One is the wall that's out in front of the property. See the wall out in front of the property there? And, uh, and, the, and she want, would like to raise that wall about 18 inches and put a cap on it. And the third, uh, uh, second part of that item is to pave the driveway. The intent of raising that wall about 18 inches is to try to stop some of the wash coming over during some of these uh, northeast storms or high, high tide storms. It's not going to solve her whole problem, but it will. On that we had, it will stop the uh, material from coming over, coming up on the land. And the rest of the items are simply landscaping that uh, was done uh, prior to us coming in here and landscaping that she did. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> That's it for now. Um, Again, we showed the uh, pier on the property. But again, we're not asking for anything on that here tonight. Jim, did you have a chance to review this? Yeah. Do you want to make some comments? Sure. I'd like to go through, I'd like to go through A through M with you. Sure. Can I take some questions as well? Yeah. Just, just for clarification. So in, uh, if we look about, you know, the need to stop yeah. the season to which because work was done without filing. Yeah. But starting at A, you know, you move pines and brooks. How many pine trees were removed? Okay, three inside there, inside the fenced in area. And then there was, I don't think it was any full pines on this side. I think it was all in. That fenced in area is this one. Right in here. Right in the tree area. Let's say eight. So how many trees were removed? Three. 
Okay, good. I'm sorry. I don't know if you would address this is repeated from Ray, but it says remove 75 plus or minus feet of brush and trees. Yes. Along with the real addi additional trees. That's got to come along the top, top of the roof rack. Yeah, so okay. Between uh, on both sides. At the entrance to the pier. Yeah, mm -hmm. the entrance to the pier up on top. The majority of it was not, was removed on the north side and some was removed on the south side. So what type of brush and what, how many trees? There was bushes. Do you have any idea, Kevin, what was removed? No, no, I don't. Think there's like five of them. I would, I would. Along the pier, along, like the back, if you're looking at, if you're looking yeah. from the house to the river, I think there was three on, there was two on this side, and there was three on this side. Apparently, they weren't the uh, typical uh, little uh, Donnie flowers that they had uh, blown a, uh, So they weren't a rose or a ghost? Yeah, it's it's probably a flower. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking. What's a flower with a rose or a ghost? Or perhaps uh, they were all females. I don't know. Um, they were on the top of the rip rock? Mm -hmm. Or the top of the bank? Yeah, the, top no, of the, bank. the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which yeah. is the yeah. zoom, the priority view. Right. So it's actually, if, if it's still on the priority view, it's considered zoom. Right. It's, on the top, it's on the top of the slope of the zoom. But there's, we'll talk about the rip rock. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to get the story. Sure, go ahead. Just to get everything that we know. Uh, they remove all the debris, you know, there wasn't apparently a lot of debris because it was stored on the side of the property and it looked mm -hmm. like debris. Did you just shut down? Yeah. Uh, okay. I have Go ahead, Jim. Okay, the, there was more, more brush. The, 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 you know, I'm not, I don't know what the brush was, but, you know, remove the debris. I don't think we have any problem with removing debris that's washed up, but this is just, it's just more brush that was already going in and around the pond. On the north side of the property, so I just want to get all this on record. So there's more, more brush removed, um, and then uh, he re well, this is the stuff that was done, and he has removed the sand and stones that washed over during the storm between the wall and the house. Along the street, Sorry? Oh, along the street there. Yeah. Did they push out? Was there any room? And in the lawn area as well. So what? And in, in the lawn area, half half of the lawn area, mm -hmm. half of the lawn was removed. I guess in the process of removing the cobbles. This will give you some indication of what the plans were. Do you have that also? That on, I, that's uh, off of Google. It shows the brush that's on up at the top of the roof rack. Right? Okay. 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 I didn't make it, unfortunately. I pushed it out. Okay, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to set the record straight. You know, three three trees and a bunch of brush, whatever type of vegetation it was. Um, now the work the work that's requested, they want to remove additional brush uh, adjacent to the exposed work, the play area, I guess, like a big swing set, uh, and the wooden platform. Raise the height of the wall 18 inches. I guess I should. I, I'm going to start commenting. I guess. As, as, as yeah, fire away. But the work work completed. Um, you know, when in, in all prior cases where someone has removed vegetation from a resource area, you've always you've always required it to be replaced with another type of vegetation. That's just a comment. That's all I was trying to get at. How many trees were removed? What type of brush? So this is this was vegetation removed from a barrier beach. So. Your decisions in the past have always been to, re to replace in kind, or sometimes you've doubled it to replace vegetation that was moved, was removed in a resource area. That's what I was trying to get at with the work completed. Now, in terms of what the work requested is, um, they want to remove additional brush, uh, the wooden platform on the front of the house. That's a non a non issue. Raise the height of the wall 18 inches and add a cap on top of that. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not aware of the commission here or elsewhere allowing. Um, larger walls to be built in floodplains on barrier beaches in green areas. Um, repairing the walls there, repairing the wall in kind, um, I don't have any comments on. I don't have an issue with that, but to raise the wall, and I know what the purpose is to try to keep the overwash, but to build it a wall bigger on a barrier beach is a precedent that you're going to, it's going to come back on you later. Um, building walls on barrier beaches is not a formidable 
stuff mm -hmm. building a figure. I would suggest it's probably not permittable replacing or repairing at the same time. But I just believe that's an all allowable activity. Uh, repave or re uh, seal the driveway. There's existing asphalt in the driveway. A lot of it's covered over with pebbles, but you can see there are, you can see the asphalt. It's in the backyard, it's in the driveway. But if it's in such a deteriorated state that it needs to be repaired or replaced, um, I would suggest it's in a buried beach, it's in a floodplain. The practice has always been to put a permeable driveway in, in place when we're doing such extensive repairs. Um, re uh, replace the brush that they're removing with ornamental trees. I would suggest it should be native, indigenous vegetation that's replaced on the property rather than bringing in ornamentals, a practice of the, a standard practice of the commission. Um, remove the stumps, I guess the stumps are from the trees that have been mm -hmm. removed already. So they want to remove the stumps, the trees are gone. And there's no reason you shouldn't remove the stumps, but again, replacing the vegetation has always been a practice of the commission when it's been removed in a resource area. Uh, low and see the area up along the riprap uh, and cut down the tree limbs on the walk to the removing can cut down tree limbs. Um, since the tree limbs are a hazard or they're in a way to access the pier. Yeah, they're just piled up there. Uh, oh, it's the debris. It's the debris, it's part of the, the debris, debris that's over there. It has to be treated. Yeah. It's, it's already been cut. The vegetation's already been cut. You can, you can see the pictures. Obviously, you have to remove that from the property. But again, it was from, it was from cutting down the vegetation. Um, remove the sand and the stones and the loam and seed the area along the south side of the driveway. Uh, removing sand and stones has, has been allowed like the person across the street just came in, but I would suggest that you've only been allowing it for access and, dr and driveway clearance. You're on a barrier beach, you're in a flood zone, you're in an overwash area, you're gonna see stones, you're gonna see sand, you're gonna see it every storm. Uh, so generally the commission is not allowed and I don't think it's consistent with the regulations to allow material to be removed unless it's for access or parking or some safety reason. Um, asking to, there's existing, if you look at the pictures, there's existing, there's maybe five pieces of riprap along the, the slope of what we would have to call the green because it's on a barrier beach, although it is still. Um, there's probably five riprap stones. The rest of it's concrete rubble. It looks like, demo, it looks like demolition material. Mm. It's, it's all concrete. It's not appropriate. It's it's there. I don't know when it was placed there. I don't know if it was placed before the regulations, after the regulations. But it's it's construction rubble. It's concrete rubble that's been dumped there. It's not an appropriate. Uh, it's not an appropriate place. I would suggest that that material should be removed and the and the green should be revegetated. If I could comment on that, I had mentioned to Jim that kind of looked to me like <coughs> material that probably was placed here. I got over there after the blizzard of 78, because it's typical uh, concrete block, and it's typical, uh, uh, if, you, if you knew Hummerock before then, a lot of those houses were built down there on concrete block as tiles, and uh, there were certain pieces that looked like that, reminded me of it, and then there was also some sections that looked like concrete slabs that could have been uh, retaining walls, or could have been cellar floors, or something like that. I have no way, I don't personally know this, but it looked to me like it was stuff that was typical after that blizzard of 78. So I comment one more thing, is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, all right, if I could, uh, thought the uh, bell was going off, we're going outside. You're running out of time. <laughs> if I could comment uh, on the raising the height of the wall. Um, I know that there has been some revetment that's been allowed. I know that there's been some large boulders that have been allowed all along the beach in Hunter Rock recently. So I don't think raising the height of that wall, even if you gave her a foot, all we were asking for is a foot and a half. Even if you gave her a foot, it would, it would help her tremendously on some of those storms. If you go down there and stand in the street now, you can see the ocean. There's just absolutely nothing there but with those houses, they're just all on piles. And every time any kind of a storm is going to come, it's going to end up in your, your front yard. Additionally, there was one item we left out, and that's a, uh, it's shown on the plant on the north side of the property between the house and the wall. Uh, a lot of the material was scraped out of this area. Uh, I inadvertently left off a uh, report to uh, Loman see that. And then she also wanted to do, Mr. Cassidy also wanted to do some sort of ornamental tree. And again, she was asking me and the city kid 
She was asking me what might grow here. I, I don't know. So she was trying to get one of the local uh, nurseries to uh, make a decision for her on the types of trees. And I think for her sake, it's important that that wall be allowed uh, to go up this way. It's, not, it's a small wall. It's only probably about a foot and a half, about a foot and a half. Uh, it will also make it much easier for the cleanup for the town on, on the normal size storms because they can come right along and scrape in front of that wall as opposed to trying to scrape stuff off of the wall. And if you want to have everything stay in Humble Rock Beach, it won't, it's not going to solve everything, but it will keep some of the material there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little soft on the wall because the wall is existing and we have allowed, for example, riprap on the ocean side to be placed in front of reconstructed vertical concrete walls. We've allowed additional stone to be, to be put there. You'll just end up with more material in the road rather than on the property, which the DPW will clean up anyway. I have a couple of more. I have a couple of comments. Um, about that. that was for you. On the on the plane itself. Yes. You've got um, you've got Edge of Marsh. Oh uh, yes. Up here. Uh, you know when what's the what's the scale? Is there? Uh, you've, got, you've got the Edge of Marsh probably. Probably 120 to 150 feet seaward of the existing, what we'll call the slope of the dune. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right, Miss Ron. Uh, <laughs> when, we, when we were getting into the pier and we started to follow the vegetation along the marsh where it was obvious between where you get a mean, mean high tide and where you get the mean, mean high tide, um, that's, that's pretty accurate as far as the outer way, but it does on the south side tuck around right inside and touches up into the pier and we never we haven't put that line on so there is there is a lot more salt marsh that's inland from that line it just went on with the uh the, the pad and we, we didn't didn't finish you know the, the, uh, the outline of it yeah so you, you, may, you may be uh, you may be separating high high marsh from low marsh because the salt marsh comes right up comes right up to the bottom yes it does so maybe, yeah. maybe you're making a distinction between low and high marsh. Yes, line, yes, I am. But we're looking, we're not looking for the low high marsh. We're looking for the salt, salt, marsh, yes. salt, salt marsh, right up to the embankment. Yeah. So yeah, typically we, for 91 purposes, we always um, follow the, the difference in the vegetation. Because you're looking for, because you're looking for the mean high water line. You're checking yeah. 91 license. Right. Right. And then you've got this other area A, of um, that's that that. Apparently, it's still since 1968. Since, no. the, since you got the permit. Yes. This yes. was this this line here was the. That was, was the, the line that was allowed. That was the uh, that was the county court where we got the 91 uh, permit line. It's got the, the, the that's listed as the mean high water line on the Chapman 91. Yes. Yeah. So the mean high water line almost came up to the backside of Central Ave in 1968. I I would think so. Um, that land, a lot of that land. <coughs> So, the, so all of yeah, but if this is irrelevant to us, but all right. of this land is apparently is apparently filled. Filled. But right. this, but this area here was filled since 1968. After I, if I could, maybe this will clarify a little bit. <coughs> if um, I, I, yeah, I don't think we really have. We don't really okay. have. Okay. I, I think it's it's just the house isn't yeah. built the way the 91 license control license. It's not built in that location. No, the house is in a different location. Yeah, the ri everything's changed again. Been looking, chasing this thing back. We found that the building permit was issued in March, late March of '68, and the Army Corps permit was in April of '68, and the state permit is in May of '68. So everything was proposed, and that's when we just never went back. So things built the way they built the way. Right, so, so if I could, so if I could summarize the, the points sure. that I think are kind of relevant. Um, one, there was, you know, there was, there was, there was vegetation removed from the property. Every project that I've been here on, the vegetation is removed from the resource areas, which then are required to be replaced with native indigenous vegetation, number one. Um, the driveway, um, the driveway, 
Tony, so you need some kind of work. Because there is, there is existing asphalt there. It's covered over, much of it's covered over with, with pebbles or stone that was brought in. I would suggest if the driveway is going to be replaced, it be replaced with permeable material, which is a standard practice of the commission in a, in a flood zone and on a valley beach. Uh, I, could, I could not use the word authorized jump construction debris and call it a riprap shore protection structure or whatever it is. It's, it's construction, dump construction debris, and I suggest it should be removed and the, the dune replaced and revegetated. Um, the wall. Um, so are you thinking that just the, con I mean, it's, it looks to me like there's both some concrete and stone there. So anything that's demolition material should be removed from that? That's what I would suggest. That's okay. what I suggest. And then revegetate it just to stable, just stabilize the back slope so that it doesn't corrode. Okay. So it's a, you, can, you, you can stabilize it with native vegetation. Um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the lawn, um, it's been a practice of the commission to require native vegetation, beach grass or something of something of that nature, as opposed to lawn. It's an unusual site because it's got a wall and it has lawn, existing lawn there. There was probably lawn there before the cobble covered it over. Right. So I'm a little, uh, again, you know, the practice is to replace it with native vegetation, which normally in a case like this would, would be beach grass. But because there's a retaining wall there, there's soil there, there's existing lawn, possibly a mix between lawn and some, some native um, salt tolerant grasses as well, anywhere where they want to replace vegetation. Um, because of the removal of the, of, the, of the pines and the brush, um, I would suggest possibly planting um, some native plants, roses, you know, Virginia rose, or some bayberry along the top of what we'll call the coastal dune on the back side, um, in place of having uh, removing the native vegetation that it doesn't like. I would think that's about it. Okay. We started with Jim. That was a little bit out of line. I agree with everything Jim says, and I think that you did get the the two pieces of concrete and jump off that bank. How long have you had the property, Mrs. Steffi? Since I've been here? I basically don't. I agree with everything I'm saying, but I, um, I'm not stuck stopping on the wall. I really don't want to see that stone wall going down to the subject. Okay. Todd? Uh, I, I think we need more specific information. I mean, I can't, we can't, there's pluses and minuses in here. I'd like to know exactly how specific this is going to be where it comes to redoing the deck. Is there going to be piles? Are you going to dig holes underneath it? It's not even, it's not even attached to the house. It's, it's on the ground. It's, it's on the ground. ground. So <coughs> you're going to replace it in kind. It's board, some boards are just falling off of it. This needs to be, to be, uh, some of the planks have to, I don't even think you have to replace it's any of them. It's going to be repaired, not replaced. Just re, yeah, just repair it. Putting new boards on it, you know, taking the old ones off that are walked or rotted. And but it does again, show on the plan that it's attached to the house. It's up against the house, it's not attached. Right. Up against it, not attached. And then again, we were just getting to the point where it, it's in several resource areas, so anything that she was going to touch, we, we need to yeah. put it on the plan. Yeah, right. Well, that's how it should be. Um, I, I think in terms of the planting plan, if in fact anything happened with the wall, we would need a specific plan that shows exactly what's going to happen, and a plan to say this is where we're going to actually do the work. I mean, I, I see this, and you have area A, C, and B, but then I read in here, and it says that you're not going to do any work in the marsh, but there's a discrepancy about where the end of the marsh is. If the marsh ends here. How are you going to get into here and pull no. all that stuff out? I mean, that's work in the marsh. Okay. Well, we weren't aware until we came here that we would have to remove that, that material. Right. But you're still talking about seeding it, cutting, removing the stumps. No, it would be up on the upper part where right. the little so red a, dots are. A, so, oh, so all of these yeah. equal 
what you're saying in yes. here. All right. And that's the top of the where it was so the other top of the slope, top of the rip rap is there. Remove the all right, oh so this is M. M yeah. M falls into air. Oh I see why I'm getting confused. It's yeah. M is here, but this says mm -hmm. in yeah. air area C. C. Which is here. Oh, oh, that's area A. I, I'm yeah. very confused. Yeah, again, um, we were trying to do those with capitals, and those were small. Yeah, I can see where you'd be confused. All right, so n nothing's going to be done in C, capital B, capital C, or capital A. Well, there is some there in capital is, A, because right. it's capital A and it's small. Yeah, right. yeah that's an enclosure. That's a closed in yard. That's a fence. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I guess the only thing I know we need a planting plan. I mean, I, I mean, there's at least at least two to one for everything that was taken down. And I also agree with pretty much everything Jim said. I'm not opposed to repairing this wall, but making it bigger, I don't, taller, 18 plus or minus inches. With a cap, so I mean, 18 plus a cap, another four, so 22 inches. I mean, I no, we know. could we could just do we could just do no higher than than 18 inches along the entire wall. Again, the wall is probably uh, knee high. Yeah, and, and it's not. I know it's not a huge wall. I understand that. Um, I I know when you you said something really interesting that when you look across the street, you can see the ocean, mm -hmm. and that's because all the houses are elevated. Mm -hmm. Do you get where I'm going with this? Because I don't really want to say it, but that seems like the logical solution is to. Barrier Beach. <laughs> you know, if you want to live on the Barrier Beach, then get above where the water goes. I, I think that's my general this, feeling. This is, <laughs> as it stands today, it is above where the water goes, but it won't be. But I, I, I'm, you've said you lived there for 10 years? Generally, we pay 30 years on a house, so you have 20 more years that you want to be there. Oh, the house puts up higher. I, I know, I, I know, but you're still feeling the effects, mm -hmm. and they're only going to get worse. I mean, I'm not trying to be gloom and doom here, but the water is rising. I think I've said my piece. That's it. Paul? Um, yeah, you know, we need a planting plan for the replaced stuff. The, all the brush needs to be cleaned off the property that's already cut, the brown stuff. Um, it, um, it, you know, pretty much everything Jim said, the driveway permeable if you are going to replace it. it. The two things that I agree with Jim as well, that he kind of spoke on both sides, was, you know, the front, the lawn in the front was kind of there. You know, uh, I'm, I wouldn't be a big fan of... Uh, fill and new lawn and but uh, I wouldn't have a problem with the you know fixing the one that was in the front and same thing on the seawall I, I your first comment normally we wouldn't allow this stuff but it's already there in the last year we've allowed two people with seawalls in the actual V zone to raise them and this is across the street from the V zone so I, I'm in fairness I don't have uh, as much of a problem probably with a wall either as an absolute. Okay. That's all I got. Um, as, as to your repairing the riprap, um, I think that I, I agree with what everybody said about taking out the, the concrete because it's pretty obvious that that wasn't part of the riprap itself. But the, the base of it, I didn't understand. Um, are you planning on Extending the base of the riprap into these areas C and B. No, you're no. not planning on amending the base of the riprap at all. At all. Okay. So if you redo it uh, and replant it, we're, we're not even going to touch it. All, all that those two green areas and the red area was just to try to show you. Okay, you're not going to you're not going to yeah. touch those areas except to get out the um, the cement. Right. To do that. Okay. Um, I would I would actually strongly suggest that instead of taking out those stumps, that they be uh, ground down. Right. Um, yeah. So that you don't bring up right. all the. Right. Uh, I think that's a 
be a very important addition to what you yeah. said. Essentially, I mean, I, 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 I just can't see uh, the driveway being anything other than permeable um, as, as to the, uh, to the wall in front, I think I'd, I would uh, lean toward what Paul just said. I mean, you, we've got to have some, some reasonable standards. And if we're going to let them, let them go on one side of the, uh, of the street, you almost have to let them go on the other side. Seawall. Right, but I would well, argue that a seawall is even a more critical zone than across the street from the V zone. And we've allowed them to be raised. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully we'll discuss it. Yes. <laughs> yes. We can discuss it <laughs> so later. So two, just two, two, two things. Uh, one, we do need a new plan anyway to show <coughs> where the resources are, where the, where the salt marsh actually is. So we do, we do need another plan anyway. And right. I know you're, yes. you want a planting plan, but we need another plan to show that the salt marsh does come up okay. on the back side of the property. All right. On a positive note, if you look at a Google, it, the Google, current Google's aer aerial, there's at least five slopes that have been stored on the marsh and have damaged the marsh. But in, you know, in, on a positive note, there is, there's language in the submittal that the slopes will no longer be stored on the marsh. They'll be stored in the, on the, in the driveway. We've popped them on the property. On the property, yeah. Yeah. On the, property, yeah. Yeah. On the paved, paved part of the driveway. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to suggest that we continue this, yeah. that you've heard the bulk of what's in um, the input from the commission members, and then try to rework your plan as work with your client and um, sort of rework your plan around those um, thoughts. The, um, the thing that concerns me is, uh, you know, I, I realize I, I think Mrs. Duffy had it out here trying to clean this up a little bit in a few trees and you've got yourself into a bigger mess than I'm sure you had thought you would. Um, and some of the problems on this lot were probably here long before you got on here. So maybe um, you, something you can do in time, you know, work out some things that, that aren't as costly. Um, and uh, you know, I mixed thoughts on that wall, keeping the material off of there is a good idea, but it essentially sends the water around the house at that point. Um, not that it already doesn't happen, but you're going to increase some of that. Um, so whether that's a great idea or not, it seems like you're going to wind up with a problem one place or the other, but it would keep some of the beach stone off. But I, I think to take away lawn um, from this property is probably not a reasonable thing to do. That's my own feeling. It's, it's already loomed and whatnot. But and again, my understanding is the septic system's out, out right. in the front of that lot. So, but to, but when you build that wall up, essentially all you're doing is taking that water that's going to rush across the street and send it around, and it's either going to go down the driveway, which is going to erode some of the driveway, it's going to around the other side, which is going to erode some of that. So you want to think about about that, Kevin. Well, well again, that's that's what it's doing right now. Again, if you look. But as soon as as soon as there's enough overwash. That just fills up 18 inches of overwash, then the water's going over the top. So you're going to just um, increase that problem. You build that wall up, it's just going to be that much more water running around before it washes over into the yard. Um, I, I don't know what the answer is. Well, anything. Yeah. But, and, and, um, and again, if she does have to cap it, right. if she's not allowed to, uh, some of the rocks start, some of the little. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice looking wall, very, built, built yep. very well. If she needs a cap on it, then any, anything you can give her to raise that. It's not going to solve everything, but it will help her on some of the stone. All right. Well, I think you need to get what these, do I need? these piece. <laughs> well, as Jim recommended, and we got a couple other hearings we got to get on to. Okay. So um, maybe we could take some of the minutes from that and get them to you, and you can. I can sit down with you sometime. Sure. It will be good for you. Okay. Monday or Tuesday. Okay. All right. Yes. So can I clean up the 
brush oh, can we, there? can we, can we? Anything that's been cut, the brush that's been cut and, and browned out and stuff like that. And uh, all the rubble and the, the old wooden things that are on the side, on the south side. That seems fine. Yeah. Right. Don't get carried don't, away. Don't cut anything. Mm -hmm. I won't cut anything. Don't cut okay. Anything. Can I grind those stumps though so I can get rid of the poison ivy? I don't see a problem. The stumps will only be inside the enclosure. They're inside the enclosure. I want to put the swing set over She wants to put okay. the swing yeah. set in. Okay. I, I, was, I, was just I know we got to stick to it, and I know you said stick to it, but I only suggest the case is still open. Any work to do, could you take a picture before you do it? Yep. Pass that back to Jim. Okay. And you just want to get rid of the poison ivy. Okay. All right, fine. Thank you. Open it up for any questions in the audience. Oh, I'm sorry. Anybody in the audience? Dawn, 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 any question that you have, you can address it through the commission, okay? Okay. Thank you. Two or three dump trucks full of fill when the driveway was dumped. It came from in front of their wall, which I thought, and also uh, area B, which they dug up about eight inches of grass and stuff. They loaded it in a dump truck and then went up the driveway with it and dumped it. Did at least two, I think, three times. So I think, in regard to what's been put around the edge or whatever, we've asked them to look at that area and revegetate wh where needed. Okay. This is filling the mash in. Okay. And also, they talk about putting orient ornamental trees in. The only things that grow down there are scrub pine. And Rogoza roses and the scrub pine, I guess she don't like them because she removed them. Well, we're going to ask for a planting plan and then we can accept that okay. or, or deny it or ask them to alter it. And also on the wall, a cap on the wall, a cap can be four inches thick or it could be 40 inches thick. Right. And again, what we've asked for is this drawing to be accepted by us. Okay. Is there anything else? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. My name is Larry Janino, 268 Central Avenue. Um, question that I have you brought up the issue of the debris just south of the, uh, the driveway area there. I was curious what the resolution is amongst yourselves <coughs> in terms of what happens to the debris, the, uh, the concrete and so on. And there's storm debris um, in that area there. And so I'm just curious in terms of what is going to happen um, in this discussion. Well, they're going to resu they're going to resubmit a plan to show us what they propose to do. Um, there is some concrete and things that shouldn't be in that location, and we'd like to see those removed. Um, and then it looks like that slope would really be something that's better suited for vegetation. Not a not a retaining wall or anything like that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I um, went up to sixty five central and adjacent to a paper street in Hoover. Sure. And your name is Susan Lindworth. I was just curious, if the wall does go up if she is level, how would that impact the property that's lower in height? Well I think that's what I, I tried to point out is, is that sure. the more this goes up, the water is going to be diverted around that. So ultimately, it goes somewhere else. Right. right. Yeah. I have, I think, about 60 feet before it gets to the next abutting property. So I would raise the wall that's over there on the other side of the driveway. When, we, when you say over there, are you talking north or south? If you look at the plan on the driveway, if you're standing out on the street, the best way on the left hand side, there's a section of wall also, but she's not planning on raising that wall. And you own 60 feet of property to the north of from where the, the wall of ends? That, from the end of the wall that goes up to the driveway, then you get the wide driveway, and then over there there's another there's a paper small street wall there. and then a paper street. So the water always goes down the paper street anyway. Paper but street I'm not, I wouldn't raise it on that side. 
Just this side, just but, across the But on the north the side of the, it looks to me like the wall goes off onto another piece of property. There's nothing north so of that house. C Street or no, but, D Street? No, but it might, who owns that property? Remember, the property's over here. Uh, See, this little section of wall there, she was not going to raise that. But this, this piece of wall here, Yes. whose right property here. does that go on to? That's, uh, that's a street, that's C Street. Okay. It's not, it's all, I believe it's still owned by the Ames. Okay. You know, not the same place. So. Okay. You're going to spell all that out in the new in the new plan. A little bit more definitively. Any pr proposes any proposed changes you make to that wall should be on that plan. Mm -hmm. A little cross section or okay. something. So I could just add one particular thing. Yeah. You saw this mention across the street. The rubber he's talking about is uh, the debris is the stuff that's on the side of the driveway, just the angle. Okay. Well, I would assume the town keeps that clear or something. I don't think there is a drain because the water always builds up in front of my wall. If it is, if there is a stuff working along the fence, though, I would think it's all right. It just shows you where it is. Okay. Storm drain there? No, I don't think no. he said there was a storm drain. No. 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 Those, those storm piers that are there right now are just storm drains. Those are from somebody else, and they okay. said they were going to come storm get them. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. We got to, and I'm sorry, if you're going to speak oh, at the sorry. hearing, well, yeah, you need to. Can we just, just your name and address? 266 Central. Your name is? Michael Murphy. Okay, no. And adjacent to Larry across from Susan and across from the Duffy residence. Okay. That. So, just so we're clear, the, the, the gangway, the, the old concrete rubble, and the, and the brush and can all be uh, removed immediately. No, the only thing that gets removed. Cut, cut down brush that, or trees or 49 right. trees that she has to remove. No concrete's going to get removed until this, these orders are in. If there's organic material like brush and um, wood and things like that, that could be a danger, that can go. But nothing else gets disturbed until the, these things are resolved. Like the old docks. Well, why don't you get your whole plan together? So, I mean, they don't have all day to do all of that either. So, I think get some things together, and and in the meantime, as Jim suggested, take some photos, and if there's things that are a hazard that could burn or create a problem, those are the are fine to go. But we don't want concrete or rocks or anything to be moved until we sort this out. It just would be to keep the neighborhood looking clean and looking the way it should. That's, what's the, that's the stuff that I would assume he would be saying, oh, for sure, take that out. If, for right now, they can remove the wood and docks and branches and all that sort of stuff, and they can grind the stumps and get rid of the poison ivy, anything else doesn't get done until we get this resolved. Rosemary? Uh, Rosemary Doby, Central Avenue. I just have one question that I frequently want to ask. How many of the sitting board members here tonight have been out to the site? Two? I will be here. I promise to be here for the next three minutes. I always want to ask this. If no, I don't hear blame you. Sometimes this is the weather and stuff. Everybody. I know the weekends I start. Okay. Not to, and, not to, and not to add to anything, but oftentimes when I go out, I take photographs. I, no. op I oftentimes give them photographs of the site. So I don't we have a no number of different sites to visit, and if we get broken up, so that. not everybody has to get to every site. I believe I understand that. Okay. All right, so we have a date to continue yes. this to. How much time, Kevin? Well, I have to meet with him next Monday to do exactly what he wants on the plan. So so Will July 16th be enough time to get information in? Well, it has to be agreed. Is that all right? You think July 16th you'll get 
If it's not all done, we'll continue it again. Yeah. Okay, I make a motion to continue until July 16th at 630. Um, Douglas 271 Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Can we take a two minute break? Take a two minute Shards. Come back next meeting. I guess that's exactly what's going to happen. We no longer have a quorum, sorry. Do you want to see the plan? It's going to be difficult to sort it out. Won't be as exciting as the last one. It's not an armor. Although the room is warm now. Yeah, it's hot in here, isn't it? It was, I think. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you know that? It was cool out here until half an hour ago. As soon as I was like, oh my God. That's why I left the door open. I'm going to air the thing clear there. What happened? Not an enjoyable time to be out there. Food. Are we allowed to talk about the first parish road thing? Can I ask you about that right now? I wonder. Oh, you can ask. I already know about it. All right. Did you see me leave the room? Well, it seemed like on the northeast corner, the road was going to wash out. Well, the road does wash out in that area, but the, I guess that's where the water from came. Remember at the meeting? Yeah, the, the sheet flow, yeah. It flows from the road onto this property. Yeah. But the issue was is that they didn't properly stake the hay yet. And when I left the room 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, I just met the contractor who just finished the stake of the hay. Right you saw right on the edge of the road where... Paul called me two hours ago, Pam? No, I know the erosion controls were like 95. Until they can regrade that, what's going to happen is they have to catch everything that's coming. Sorry, I don't know what No, I'm talking about, so if you look at the edge of the road, the embankment is, yeah, but what happens if it's right. under there? Would the road collapse? That's what I was, because it looked like it could to me to me. Uh, I, yeah, I guess, yeah, I could see, yeah, that it was dropped there. But. Where's Tony go? Yeah. So they'll let you get a water, I think. And when they change out the catch basin a little further down the street, they'll put a little berm along the edge that directs the water down to the catch basin. So I just didn't want to see you guys replace the road if it washed out. We've actually sold it, though. As soon as Paul called me, I immediately called him. Oh, you? All right, so it's not yet. Still, if something's wrong when I drop out of the then let me know because I can get a hold of the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he just walked in the building full of sweat and said, I just staked it all in. Here's the pictures on his phone. Nice. He showed it to me. He goes, You want me to try and get copies of these? I said, No, I'll tell him. No, it's fine. When you leave, you know, drive over, it's all staked in. I thought that the, uh, the resource was fine. I was seriously, it looked to me like it could scour out under the road, so I didn't want you guys to be or whoever. I said we're going to break for two minutes. Right, which there was a little bit of underneath the, he, he probably hammered it down. When there was a whole pile of space in there, it seemed like. On, uh, that, on June, stuff is the we ready? On June 25th, 2012, 720 p.m., the Town Hall Citrus Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131. Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situate Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Mark Winchester, 
Diamond Development to delineate the wetlands on property located at 153 and 159 Hollis Street situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. You're up. Uh, for the record, Steve the Orphan. Um, what we're doing here tonight is we're filing to try to delineate the resource areas on this site. And um, presently, there is nothing on the plan that shows any proposed project. There will be a proposed project, but we want to establish that, uh, the resource areas, uh, before we start any of that. And you can see in blue on the plan, uh, the property was flagged by uh, John Zimmer. Beginning of June, and I've also highlighted on the plan the FEMA flood elevation, which is 88 elevation 9, and in pink is the town of Situate uh, flood plan, uh, both which are uh, scaled off of the existing maps. Um, I guess that you're going to hopefully take a vote to send it out to a consultant to have the line reviewed. And as far as tonight goes, that's about all I really have to say. Um, Penny? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, it makes sense on any end uh, to me to have a consultant. No, no questions. What's the, what's the pink line? Pink line is the town of Situate flood plan. Oh. No other questions? Jim? I'd like to recommend uh, having an outside voting, the commission voting to get an outside record consultant to check the line. Check the delineation. Do, have any of you folks, have you seen this or can you see it? Sure. By the way, I'm John Whitaker. I'm the abutter at 594 Country Way. Okay. And, uh, generally, I like the idea of this, except my one concern is the town drainage that goes through here. And whether that's relevant to your discussion tonight or not, but you can see it. There's a pipe that drains both this whole area of street and the uplands up around uh, Creelland Drive and comes out here into this ditch. All I care about, the town just spent a fortune to rebuild it all the last year. There used to be substantial flooding, if you recall. I know you're building a project mm -hmm. right down the street, right up in here. That's all been fixed. All's well and good. We just worry a little bit. I don't think so. He's a very good developer here. But that's, that's why we're watching. <laughs> Otherwise. Well, but you understand for this evening what yes, we're going to do. About this we just want, want to yeah. confirm where the wetlands line yeah. is. Exactly. And then any future project would would yes. come back and and uh, but point well taken. It, it's something to think about. Thank Appreciate you it. Thank you. Appreciate it. I can take two seconds just to respond to that. The um, when the town put the drain in years ago, it basically is just a pipe that ends, and they took an excavator and dug a trench. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a ten foot easement along the south side of that property. And unfortunately, when they put the drain in, they missed the 10-foot easement further onto our property. Um, How long has it been there? It's been there for a while. So but you might own it. You know, you know, they don't own it, but um, we, we can't shut the water off, let's put it that way. Uh, but we have had a conversation with Kevin Cafferty at DPW. A part of our project that will come in is to actually do some improvements to that drainage and put in a plunge pool with stone riprap that will be a little bit better than what it's doing right now. So there will be an improvement to that, not changing the pipes that, that are there, but uh, we will come up with a plan that will incorporate that in. Is a plunge pool different than a level spreader? Absolutely. Okay. Why is it this? Ty? I have yeah, no good. questions. <coughs> Everybody good? No, we're good. No. Anybody else? Okay. So you know the drill. Whenever. Uh, Whenever he wants to get started, we'd be glad to give you a check for a retainer and get the wetlands oh. guy out. And okay. Okay, so what should we do out a month or just two weeks? Would you just do the same in the next two weeks? I think you put it out a month. A month. All right. All right, I could, we'll put it two weeks and continue it if we have to. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So once th there'll be a hearing in, uh, on the 16th, and our consultant will have a report and either confirm or, or may ask them to make some changes to their wetlands line. 
Um, but there'll be no, there's no project proposed at this point. All we want to know is, is confirm where that line is, okay? Thank you. It, yeah. We have a list of a few people that we we would give that to typically that that would do that, and we, then. We pick not the developer. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I said <laughs> the commission picks who the consultant is. It has nothing to do with the developer or the right, right. applicant. No, I was just I wondering say. if, we have, if yeah. there was a, a group of people who do the city for conservation. On we try to. How it works. Usually, there's two or three folks that that would typically we could choose from to, to do that. There's more, but we sort of have a, a group that would do that. The, the thing with a wetlands line, it's, it's by science. As opposed to a survey line that there's an actual place for that, someone has to come out and look at the soils and the vegetation and things, so it can be interpreted a little bit differently between one person and another. So um, we'd like someone else to look at this line and, and either confirm that the, that the wetland scientist that marked it was correct, or if they feel that there's some places where um, he erred, then we would do that, and there'd be something, uh, some sort of conversation or whatever, to come up with the correct line or agreed upon line. Oh, thank you. Very much. Thank you. In, in addition, in addition, in addition to that, there are there are certified wetland scientists. It's so it's, it's sort of like a, a, a professional engineer. The commission, the commission will only will only select a certified wetland scientist only. That we know is trained and certified to be able to conduct the process properly scientifically. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Where are we at? We're at orders, aren't we? Oh, well, certificate of compliance. So why don't we go to? Can we go right to orders? Okay. I have a couple of things I'll say in the, in the, in the agent's report after you get okay. to, when, when you get to that. So Kimmel. I will tell you that the Rawls Food Commission actually meets an hour before the hearing so that the, so that the agents can tell the commission all about the pro properties that they've already permitted. It's just an experience I had last week. Do that. I thought it was very interesting. So what happens? The commission, meets, the commission meets in half an hour or an hour before the actual hearings begin so that the agent reports on pro past projects with permitted so you know kind of what happened to past projects. Oh, really? And I started thinking about that, saying once you guys decide on something, it kind of goes away in your life. Well, we have ongoing Dave, orders, and know, it's good. I know, but it's Dave and I. Was just Maybe we could start our meetings two hours earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like to hear. We'll Girl, we oh could outdo God. well fleet. <laughs> It was an interesting experience. Huh. Yeah. Four well, in a way, our selectmen start up informal meeting. Is that walking? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you'd want to do a walking. But no. Just, you know, yeah, we'll do a walking. I just feel like at the end of every commission meeting since I've been here, I feel very rushed, and I have a list, and I usually don't even say anything because I know by the time it gets to the end of the meeting, you're all standing up. And oh, that's what this is all about. <laughs> I, I like how the agenda has changed since our last mishap well, to where yeah, everything's I at the end. That. It's an improvement. It is. Yeah. Well, if we cut down on the chatter and get right to the point, we'll have time to get to all that stuff. Oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> all right. So, um, Kimmel, 62 Corner Stetson Road. Anybody have any uh, thoughts on this? Straightforward, right? Yeah. I make a motion to accept the order of petition of Kimmel 62 Kenneth Stetson. I second. Written. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. McCarthy, um, 109 Hummer Rock Beach Road, raise, rebuild dwelling. No, you took an order out by 40. Is that out of that Hummer Rock Road? I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, was. You took one out. That was Rebecca Road, wasn't it? Huh? What? Am I confused? No, I think you're right. I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, number 40 was taken out because <coughs> you agreed. I was confused as whether they had to submit a revised plan, but you said they were within. Oh, yeah. I think that was one. Wasn't that one of mine? 
Yeah. Yeah. There, 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 was a, there was a pilot plane in the box. That's the one we're on now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, can we have a motion? I make a motion to accept the copy 109 Hemlock Road, Beach Road, F revised this afternoon. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Kincaid, 53 Rebecca Road. That's a condition of not an order. Order order. It gets confusing. Now I get you. Yeah. <laughs> He's caught up. <laughs> I get you. He just always wanted to fight you. No, no, no. Yeah. Kincaid, 53 Rebecca Road, raise, rebuild, garage. I make a motion to accept Kincaid, 53 Rebecca Road. Just before, written. before we uh, vote on that, I have a note that uh, they were going to move the building mm -hmm. and, and submit a new plan. Have they done that? I believe my recollection was that the, the commission at the last hearing agreed to issue the order with the condition that they can't begin work until they give us a little, un, little unusual. And that's, uh, okay. A little unusual, but I believe that's what the commission voted on. If, if that's in there, then that's fine. Yeah. 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 Sure. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Lamb, 11 Oliver Street, septic repair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Hale, do we have that ready? I, yeah, I thought I saw Did it in there. Hale was in there. No, it's here. I just, we just, we're clo we closed it tonight. So. Right. right. It was that you had promised that or something. Okay, yeah, right. And are we going to, um, we'd, we'd have to add a condition. We want to add yeah. the condition about the invasives. That's the one we just talked about where Paul suggested they do some. Well, actually, impermeable paving, can't, but there's two conditions we need to add to it. One is invasive and impermeable, permeable paving. But if you look at it, the plan, the plan just as a note on the new driveway, and it says it's going to be constructed with either brick or concrete paving. Technically, both of those would result in an impervious surface. And, but if you do permeable concrete, so we'll add two, re two revisions at the driveway. All right, so we want a permeable driveway and that we're going to, to direct them to remove invasives on, on the property to be reviewed with the agent. Which Paul Shea in particular. Right. You know, at the pre-construction or whatever. <laughs> okay. And you know, um, Do I have a motion on that? We have a motion. I make a motion to accept with the revisions or the add-ons. What do you want to call it? Add-on conditions. Add as amended. Add-on conditions as recommended. Oh, Lord. The Hale 3741 Mortar Covenant and Road. So I didn't, I didn't hear it. It was at two conditions, right? Yes. Okay. The add-on conditions. And one order. I didn't see. Yes. S didn't count. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 See what happens right now? Give us <laughs> Aye. You know, now that's, that's a very important point about the pavers. Because you, you remember the Lighthouse Road one? Yeah. Where they said pavers. And when I went out there, there was a concrete um, unit when ready to pour the concrete in between the units. <laughs> no, 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 no. So it must say permeable. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Right, because you can set pavers in mortar or concrete. Yeah, exactly. or <laughs> right, yeah, no, we got pavers. We got pavers, mortar to joints, concrete slab over. Pavers are in. Okay. Okay. Um, we have some certificates of compliance. Yeah. Those certificates? Yeah. Boy. Yeah, and they're okay. Both certificates? Okay. One do bar, so. Well, do we have to accept them or anything? Or? We just sign them. We just sign them. All right, but they're here. I need to have a seat. Okay. Jim, have you have you been to both those locations? Park Ave and, and Clap Road? Oh, yeah. Yeah, fine. They both have Okay. Fine. I went out to both of them. Okay. Oh, we got an extension. Hope it's on Lot 1 a little bit by the road. Well, let's, let's get the certificates out of the way. COC. Well, you just told me we don't. We don't, we don't vote on them. We just sign them. 
Yeah, we just sign them. Yeah. They inspect and sign. Okay. Yeah. So an extension for Pope's this Pond? Is a, this is an issue with the CFC. I'll bring it to your attention. All right. That when it's on the agenda. What are they looking for an extension at Pope's Pond? I think they're looking for a three year extension. They, they qualify for a two year extension. They want it three. Is that the driveway that runs along the of bog? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd, somebody want to make a motion on that? Or okay, any discussion? I can tell you that, I mean, this is an older hearing, but this was a long, drawn out process. It's like, what, and what was the address? Well, whatever the reason was, we went back and forth on this. We actually directed them to make a driveway in one place and then told them to put it in another. So I think it's just a matter of giving them the opportunity to do this. In the next 10 years. Well, well, well you think three years is good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Second. Yeah. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. There's actually there's quite a bit of, of mitigation there. There's drainage swales and that they've already done. No, but that all have to be constructed to do this. As part of the plan we just extended. Right. Um you wanna talk about that globe article? Yes. Jim. Yes. So there was just an article, uh, or the, I caught on the news or someplace, about sea levels rising and in more air, in, in showing up in, like in, in different areas that are more critical than others. And I just didn't know if what you had heard or read or. This sea level over the past a couple of hundred years has, has risen one, one foot every 100 years. I haven't been there that long, I don't in, know, but you could Massachusetts, elaborate. The, the, world, the eustatic worldwide rise of sea level is approximately between four to six inches. It's about six inches worldwide. Massachusetts landmass is sinking twice as fast as the worldwide sea level is rising. You keep coming to one of my lectures. This equates to <laughs> <laughs> approximately one vertical foot over 100 years over the past couple of hundred years. Since the 1980s. Is that true, Kevin? No, we're sinking. The flight, the flight, one flight is going underneath. The I was other. just hoping to have someone with we're the. California. <laughs> <laughs> one flight's going under the other. That's not true. <laughs> I knew that would <laughs> I knew that would add a little. Yeah, there we go. On the west coast, <laughs> this is true. Here, it's because we, we're at the peripheral bulge. I was just hoping someone with a couple hundred years' experience could weigh in on that. Well, again, my mother just passed away. She's been around here for 103 years, so I, I used to be able to say I could go home and ask her if I. Could <laughs> so really, that so we're dropping. Uh, we've dropped over a foot. Or, or, or a theoretically, between the level of the, the water coming up in the land mass sinking, we're about, about one vertical foot. The net one, change, one right? Years. Since the since the 1980s, uh, the scientists have documented have uh, documented the acceleration in sea level rise. This area is going to get particularly harder hit than many of the other areas around the really? country because of our, our subsidence and because of current circulation. We will experience a more rapid rise. But the point is, is that it's now documented since the 1980s that sea level, that the acceleration in sea level rise that's, that's been predicted by the scientists for the past 30 or more years is now happening. It has, it has been documented. Hmm. And it's almost twice the rate that it has been over the past 200 years. So the, the prediction now by, that's accepted across the country, including the, UN, the USGS, who are putting it in publications, is to plan for the average approximately a three-foot rise over the next 100 years. What they're saying about the vulnerable areas are the areas that flood now. So those, the sewage treatment plants that are always built on the water, the water treatment plants, which are, are built near water and bodies. Yeah. Those, those and septic systems along the shore, water wells along the shore, because the acceleration in sea level now is, is, is documented, that's the water rising, that's still not the land mass sinking. We'll continue to sink for thousands of years. But um, about a three foot rise over the next 100 years for all these vulnerable areas, Really? It's time to plan now what those areas are. Now, interestingly, Marshfield Institute in Duxbury are uh, working on a second phase of a sea level rise inundation study to identify the vulnerable areas of which of which you're reading about now. Where are the vulnerable areas? Where are the evacuation routes that are going to be underwater in 20, 30, 40 years that are now the evacuation routes, which will not be evacuation routes in 20 or 30 years? So uh, Paul Halfiotis, the planner in Marshfield, is working with is working with Laura and the and the um, Duxbury um, planner as well 
and doing this five pound study looking at sea level rise and Paul Harpier is really a brilliant champion to get the other side. Grant money will do phase two to look at more detail on what, where the vulnerable areas are. So we want to map those areas and then decide what to do beyond that. That's an ongoing project. Well, thank you. I've always been told we can't take that information into account when we're talking about a particular property. Is that like inside of trading? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> exactly. uh, I mean, and it seems to be. Think about a hammerock fall. <laughs> what you do, well, you, you know, what I've been told by the DEP attorneys is you have to make a decision based on today's conditions. So right. What do you have right. to bring before you? But if you have a bylaw, a local ordinance or a bylaw, you can add um, planning criteria for things like sea level rise, which fortunately the situate wetlands regulations already have that in there. Wetlands regulations say that uh, you need to um, factor in a one foot rise in the A zone, which is generally still water flooding or less than a three foot wave, and a two foot rise in sea level for B zone. So we have the capability to do it on with the local bylaws. Okay. So, okay. you know the revision we just did? Excuse me? The revision we just did added two feet to the, yeah. for the B zone. Sea level rise. One foot was in there already. Okay. So we'll be able to use that in the future. Right. Like for, like for example now, if somebody goes in for, uh, to build a house at the first floor in an A zone, that's a base flood elevation, they have to go one foot higher. You need to accommodate sea level rise. In the B zone, it's in B zone they need to go two feet higher. But that two foot higher is actually a state, it's within the state building code, it's the loss of the zone. But they, didn't, but they didn't say why, they didn't say sea level rise. They just said there's a potential inaccuracies in the models that FEMA uses to calculate the So in 33.3333 years, we're going to have one more foot of water? The acceleration is not linear. Right. So it's a good planning norm, but the acceleration, if you look at the sea level rise curve, you know, it's a linear, uh, you can have a linear drifting line but you'll see this drift doing this. So, mm -hmm. so technically in the 34th year, it could rise eight inches versus only four for the first 33 years. And you could fill this room with scientists, each with a different opinion of what's gonna be yeah. in 33 yeah. years. But there's, no yeah. but there's no denying the trend. The trend yes, the trend right, but again, it. Kind of like doing a BBW 28. <laughs> Put five wetland scientists in the field, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anything else? Uh, that you'd uh, like to bring to our attention this evening? Uh, I'm, I'm in the process under the direction of the um, town administrator to work on a seaweed removal policy, seaweed removal from beaches policy. The DPW will be coming forward with an NOI uh, for seaweed removal from beaches. Paul and I have been to several meetings with the DPW, the health agent, and the town administrator looking at the seaweed. Makes wonderful fertilizer. It does if you can get rid of all of it that's washing up. And the problem is we can't get rid of all of it that's washing up. We need to, that's one of the, one of the sticking points is what do we, what do we do with the What do we do with it? With yeah, where does it go now? Like in Hummer Rock, they come and clean, everyone rakes the whole beach into piles. DPW comes and takes it away. Where, where do they bring it? Do you know? Probably to the place where we dump all our leaves. <laughs> yeah, because that's a lot. Um, yeah. they do they have an order for that? Pile? I've never seen it there. Never seen anything. <laughs> no, that would stink too because when <laughs> compost it reeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In, yeah, in, you know in, it. In, importantly, um, I'm not sure we can discuss it now, but I want to just bring to your attention that you know, Carol, I have, Carol and I, particularly Carol, has been noticing that you know we have a five day uh, prior re uh, re requirement to have information in five days prior to the hearing so that it can be public notice. The, G the state law requires you have that you have public notice all five days. If there's a glitch in the getting the notice in the newspaper, we are not meeting the five-day requirement, and that's happening now. So we're considering moving the requirement to receive information to eight days rather than five to make sure we read the state law. Okay. So are you mm -hmm. saying that instead of the Monday before, before the Monday night meeting, the, the stuff should be in on Friday before the Monday? Wednesday or Thursday. If we go All right, well, yeah. we just yeah. we, we have to make it clear because yeah. they 
And you know, and then they come in two days before the meeting, so that's something else. Well, we, we don't, go ahead. Monday, two or three determination, requests for determinations came in. Because yeah. we weren't meeting again, and whenever, till July 16th. Yeah. We have to schedule within 21 days. But they, they expect they drop it off Monday. It has to be in the paper five days. Yeah. Sometimes the paper can't get it in Tuesday. Mm -hmm. They do have a cutoff time. Okay. Yeah. Plus, I've been having a little trouble with the paper. Yeah. And so then it goes in. It has to be in there Wednesday. I mean, you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Monday. I mean, that's really pushing it. Sure. So, so I usually try and send to the paper the Thursday before. Say we're meeting. Where are we? Today's the twenty fifth. Yeah. You, you I don't even see the month. Anyway, the Thursday before. And he's got another pair of glasses. If you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, that, I, I do need them, but where are the months listed? They're in the big letters. Oh, January, February, here. June. Yeah, right here. Yeah. That's June. That's June. Oh, see the big It was letters. too big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I would almost like it then. You know, I try and give them as much lead time as I, I possibly can. I understand. Okay. So right. we got to either cut off the time and tell them, sorry, you're too late for that meeting. Right. And worry about the 21 days. Okay. How, how, do you, how do we do that? Do we just start telling them and then, or do we have to have something in writing? Yeah. Yeah. We, will have, we, will, we will put something in writing, but it's going to be a, 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 you know, a gradual process while people get used to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. What else? And uh, the last thing is um, I, you know, I'm going to write up also, in addition to that, um, as a, and I mentioned this before, I'm just bringing it up again, as of July 17th, uh, the town will be adopting East Wellington on Grade Map. We will not be able to accept, and this is this is good if we're on air. We'll be not, we will not be able to accept after July 17th any plans that are based on NGBD 29, which is which is pretty much the norm that most surveyors are using now in terms of vertical elevations. Con no, uh, really? Contours. They're going to have to use a new uh, datum, NABD 88, beginning July 17th. So we need to start getting that word out ASAP. Hmm. And that's available the now. Inspector, the planning department, the health department, the, all the plans are going to have to be referencing this new, this new um, vertical data, NADD 88. So okay. Just I want to, the more I say it, the more the word will get around. And we'll probably have a little workshop. I did have a, 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 a surveyor um, agree to do a little presentation and maybe we'll get as many surveyors and consultants just to get that word out. So that's great. It's really important. Thank you. Paul? Anything? Okay. One, uh, one other item yeah. um, that I think is on the agenda, if not, back with it. Um, associate <coughs> member. Yeah. Um, I, th I just think we should get rid of the, the, the term associate member. I mean, we have some good people who, who volunteer for us and they do great jobs, um, but to call somebody an associate member, I think, um, puts a, a an increased, um, um, I don't know what you what you call it, a, a persona um, on these people um, that the good ones don't need and the bad ones shouldn't have. Um, if there is a distinction between between those, but I just think that that we should we should get rid of it. I think we we have to encourage um, citizen participation and helping us and all this kind of thing the way you know a number of people do. But um, uh, but to call them associate members, I, I just think is is going overboard at this stage in the game. And I don't know how anybody else feels about it. So I'm just bringing it up. Do we actually have anything in our bylaw or, or any of our roles that actually define what an associate member is or how they came to be? I mean, there, there's been a couple of people that have been as termed associate members since I've been serving for six years. Yeah, right. And, and, but I don't know how they ever came to be. They have been associate members since I started. 
inspired, that's how I really know him. Right. Right, but that that lends a little credence to what you're saying. We have no, there's like no term. You appoint someone an associate member, and and how long? Ten years later, are they still an associate? Right. Well, let's. You know, can we not? We're not going to adopt it one way or the other tonight. But let's. If you could maybe like take a little look and see how that came to be, or how we worked that out. I, I just. There are some people that help tremendously, and and. I don't disagree with giving that, them a little bit of um, recognition or whatever through that. I, I don't think is a, a bad. The, but but how do, how do we do it? And do we yeah. do we should it once a year as we get new members here? Should we also agree on who associate members will be and for what purpose, if or or not do it at all? But maybe maybe we need to look at that. Yeah, the second term I think is important. The purpose. What's you know if you have if you have somebody who has a specific purpose that's going to help them. Right. It could be associate member. It could be another term. But if they have a specific task to take care of, it'd be nice to give them some some recognition. Well, I think recognition is really important. And, but, and the more. But a little bit of a title. I mean, if you have someone that's doing trails or someone that wants to work on some coastal things or whatever, and say this is an associate mm -hmm. member, they can't vote, but they can come in here with some. Um, title or whatever and, and address the commission and say this is where we're at or an email or whatever. But well, let, let's look at it. I, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. But I think maybe rather than have it be ongoing that it's something that we could um, uh, just Re revise. Right. Well, that's fine. Or like well, you say, well, you annually, annually we'll just appoint, appoint, them. appoint them and then it expires or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So yeah. Well, just like Thorne does. I mean, why Like well, it's not like they get any perks, you know. It's I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> they get a company why, car. Like, and <laughs> I guess what I'm asking, why is maybe they do? Why is he an associate member? I don't know. It's like the pyramids. Right. They don't last that's everything. That's all all right. Okay. You get, and then. Um, all right. Well, let's look okay, at it. Yeah, we'll really look at. Really I think we'll form a subcommittee of you and Tony to evaluate that and, and, and uh, get back to us. Like at least a three-page report on. You shirked your responsibility yes. enough. Haven't you? Vice chair. <laughs> a vice chair. If you're not here, if you're not here, yeah. if we were a vice chair, yeah, uh, they would take all the yeah. Okay, hey, excuse me, vice chairperson. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Are we going to re do do our reorganization? Well, is Scott? Um, is is Scott going, finished? Uh, yes, he is finished. So, okay. um, I would like to. And we don't have. Um, Another appointment yet, right? The no, selectmen no. haven't. Uh, I, don't, no. I don't know. I don't no, think we so. Don't. So right now. We're, we're the happy five, and the sixth one is I don't know where he is. Kevin. So okay. I guess he did the kudos and the thanks this time. This oh, we yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, no. we'll follow up with something. Um, okay. Yeah. But do you want to do the reorganization tonight? Of I think that's supposed to be on the agenda. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So right. well, let's put it on the next meeting. Why can't we? Because it's not on the agenda. Oh. And, we and someone the could agenda. have asked and put it on the agenda earlier, but since they didn't. Well, I expected you to do that. Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on, on that Sorry. note. <laughs> your mother. Uh, we have, as the commission, we have the authority to appoint the associate members? Yeah, yeah that's true. Okay. Because I just we're, remember a conversation with other yeah. other towns. Carefully you're gonna be put out of that commission to. committee. Yeah. Well, now you have three volunteers to work on the associate well, members or, or whatever we're gonna call <laughs> that, that, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know All know right. Can we uh, you notice he's he's too smart to talk We need to get that. these things signed. Yeah. Can we get our orders signed? Can we adjourn our meeting? We can. Um, I propose that we adjourn the meeting. I thought I was enjoying myself. A motion to adjourn. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the next time you overshoot the runway.